like to invite everybody in the room for uh, just the next few minutes to imagine with me that we could accomplish uh, what most would say is a uh, almost ridiculous goal. That we could actually support the success of every child, every step of the way, from cradle to career. Every child. I actually believe this is infinitely possible. And it's not going to take heroic leadership. It's not going to be completely based on an influx of cash. In fact, I would venture to say that we could do this in large part with the resources we already have in place. In order to achieve this goal together, it's going to come down to something rather unremarkable, as a matter of fact. It's going to come down to data and how we use it. In order to get every child to succeed, every step of the way from cradle to career, it's going to come down to data and how we use it. So what do I mean by data? Henry Ford once said, if you don't measure it, you won't improve it. Well, I, I think he was right on target. But when it comes to children, the fact of the matter is we actually do measure it in many ways. We have education data. We have health data. We have nonprofit data. We have social service data. We have all kinds of data. And individual experts within those sectors are using that data to better serve children. What, what our challenge is, is we don't have all that data in one place so we could understand what each and every individual child would need in order to truly succeed. So if you could imagine in your car you have the dashboard, and in front of you is all that data you need in order to get from point A to point B. Imagine if we had that for a child. If we had the education data, the health data, the nonprofit data, the social service data, all in one place, so leaders from the living room, to the boardroom could actually begin to make decisions based on what children really need to thrive and succeed. Now very quickly, when, I, when you start to talk about doing this with data, privacy is always the first thing that comes up. And I, and I would just like to offer this up. Uh, every weekend, or maybe during the week, I go to the grocery store and I have a list, my wife has a list, I go and I dutifully go around the store and I come to check out, I swipe my frequent shopper card, and, and now, with your receipt, you also get what? You, you get all these coupons, right? And I, those used to really annoy me. But then I started to look at them, and they actually reminded me of things I was supposed to buy and forgot. I don't know if any of you have had that experience. And what I realized is they have all this information on me that they know what I want to buy and what I, what I need. And I started to think, why can't we figure out how to organize all that information in order to better serve children? So when we, when we're, when we face these privacy issues, we have to be able to figure out how we can get, get over that hump. But, but let's say for a second, let's imagine we do have this dashboard. And actually, Cincinnati Public Schools is, is doing some incredibly innovative things and working with Microsoft to create a prototype of this. But let's say we have this dashboard for a second. Then it becomes, what do we actually do with the data? And there's two things there. It's how do the decision makers use the, the data, and how do we actually use the data on the ground to serve children? So real quickly on the decision makers, imagine if you could take all that data and, and, and pull it together in a collective way. Imagine how we could begin to make decisions differently. So often when it comes to the time, talent, and treasure of people in the community, and certainly those making decisions about millions of dollars, we use our hearts more than we use our minds when it comes to using data to figure out how to better serve children. So imagine if we started having that data at our fingertips and we started thinking about return on investment, or better yet, the social return on investment for all the resources we have around children. If we think that way, we, we have a different mindset about how we invest in children. So then let's talk about how we would actually serve children differently on the ground. And to that I want to use an example of Alonzo. Alonzo is born and uh, he's, he's, he's at the hospital and the doctors are able to look at his dashboard right away and they see that he doesn't have a primary care physician. So they talk with the parents about this, they immediately identify a couple physicians in his neighborhood, they give the parents that information, they call it a primary care physician and they make the connection to make sure he gets enrolled in one of their offices. They also talk to the parents and they find out that they both work so that Alonzo is going to need some child care. So they immediately call the United Way, which is cataloging the best, most effective, and funding the best, most effective child care centers all over the city. They find some right in his neighborhood. 
They once again give that information to the parent, they give it to the child care center, and they make sure he gets enrolled so he has the best possible chance of being ready by the time he gets to kindergarten. So then let's go a little bit further down the road. Let's say in fourth grade, all of a sudden Alonzo's having some trouble, the red lights are going off, and they, they say, what's going on? They look, they see he had an eye exam, he needs some glasses. They call the health clinic, they call the Lions Club, they get him some glasses. And then down the line, he's in ninth grade, all of a sudden they, they, he's, he's really having some troubles, he's getting, he's getting in fights and whatnot, and they say, oh, the, a counselor wrote down, he's having some troubles at home, parents got laid off, he needs a strong adult role model, they call Boys and Girls Club, next thing you know he's got a mentor, and things begin to improve. We need all that data in one place. And once we have it, we begin to have the ability, the ability to begin to make decisions about what each individual child needs and collectively what would get us the best social return on investment. But more importantly, once we have that data, we have the responsibility. There is no more excuse, once we have that data at our fingertips, why we shouldn't collectively, all of us, all of us in this region, be able to support every child, every step of the way, from cradle to career. Thanks.